uh, like I am every day, but it's because of the wonderful audience and guest hosts that, that make me not want to miss one of these shows. Uh, with that said, if it's 11 a.m. Eastern time, it's LinkedIn Live, Hour of Empower. Today's word is produce as if producing something, not the fruit or the vegetable. Uh, and uh, I've got a, a wonderful guest, a good friend that I've gotten to know over the last week or so. And uh, his name is David Wolf. He uh, has a lot of expertise in producing quality uh, content and marketing. So uh, with that said, chat's open. We depend on chat to direct us, make us as relevant as we can to you today to justify your time, effort, and thought. Uh, so uh, whoever wants to go first, go right ahead. With that, I'll turn it over to David. He can share a little bit of context on what you really need to know about him to get to know something more about him and what his initial thoughts on the word produce. So David, welcome to the Hour of Empower. Uh, we've got our first uh, comment from Elizabeth who's been a continuous uh, guest on the show as well as a wonderful audience member. So, you know, I always put a comment out there because like a tip jar seems like as soon as someone's <laughs> yes, uh, indeed. Yeah, they, they want to do it. So that's that was what I did it for. So anyway, David, uh, great to have you. Thank Thanks so much, Don. Great to be with you. I'm grateful to be here. It's such an interesting um, project and model that you've created. Great to be with everybody. And I'm happy that it's a Friday, too. There's something about Fridays, right, Don? It just feels like there's a cycle to humanity and we refresh for the, the new week and we sort of tie up the old week. It's just there's something about Fridays. I don't know what it is. Anyway, I, um, you know, I don't want to uh, I'll give you a quick bio just for some context. So I, I was born and raised in Chicago and I was a musician for many years playing. I played drums and eventually piano and keyboards in that market up and down Rush Street playing jazz and fusion and rock and bar mitzvahs and weddings and all the things you do as a young musician. My very first gig was the, uh, uh, with a Dixieland band at Marriott's Great America. It was a terrific thing. I was 15 years old. So, uh, but after some amount of time, I realized, yeah, you know what? I think I've got more to say than the drums can contain for me. So I began to study uh, orchestration, music composition, learn how to write songs, learn how to eventually entering and preparing to enter what we used to call, or maybe in some circles still call the jingle business. And Chicago's advertising music business uh, was vibrant then. There were many, many producers do, working with all the ad agencies. So after a series of very bad demo uh, reels or tapes then, but now, you know, it'd be MP3s, right? But uh, I was schlepping them around to uh, all the producers in Chicago. And eventually I got a call from uh, a guy named Dick Marks who uh, took me under his wing. And I worked with Dick for about five years and learned the business, how to sync music to film, how to work with clients, how to run recording sessions with singers and players. It was fabulous. And then uh, got married in 85, moved to Dallas, and we formed my own company with my wife called Cry Wolf Music. No, no pun intended, of course. And, um, and from there, we, we, I you know, started uh, ma making a name in that market and eventually somewhat nationally. We would compete with the two coasts, but I did a lot of work on a lot of brands. Some of them you've heard of. They're very familiar, like Chuck E. Cheese restaurants or Southwest Airlines or we worked a lot on Frito Lay because they're kind of based in the Texas uh, region, and uh, all kinds of names I could drop. But it was it was terrific experience for me because I really approached the production, the producing, in a, in a mosaic sort of way. I wanted to be able to answer my clients' needs, no matter what the style of music was. You know, some people ask, "Well, what style did you write?" Or did you like to write? And one of the reasons I think that worked for me at age 26, starting in Dallas, is most of the, the uh, music guys down there at the time were fairly narrow and specialized. You know, you had your country rock guy, you had your, you know, every, everyone kind of had a, a narrower uh, spectrum of what they could do from a standpoint of music vocabulary. So I came in wanting to be able to do anything. If it was Mozart, I could do that. Uh, it, if it was uh, rap, I could do that, you know, you know uh, believe it or not. Uh, and this is 1986. So I, we ran that company for about 13 years. And then at, at age 40, I kind of went through a midlife, now what? And uh, got interested in the business of media. And that took me into the world I'm in now, where we produce podcasts and audiobooks for content generation. Here's the thing about your word today, production, for, for me. And this may touch some people that are with us. Uh, and then I'll stop. Um, 
the transition from having a company where it was all about me writing a piece of creative work from David shifted. And as I turned 40 and moved into the business world and then to the present, now it's all about producing for everyone else and getting their voice out into the world. I'm satisfied with the work I've done expressing myself. Now it's about having an impact and facilitating that ability for others, whether they're in business or they're an author. Uh, the business I now run is called Audavita Studios, and it is a podcast and audiobook production and distribution company. I've got a fabulous team. I'll, I'll, I'll park it there for now. But pr for production for me changed from producing for myself to now producing for others. So, Well, that's great. And I, I, I think what you have just said is very uh, insightful and hopefully something that can encourage and empower other people uh, to share, yeah. to, to take parts of your story and your journey that took you as long as it did and with the effort maybe uh, gleam a few quick takeaways that they can complement what they're already doing. But, you know, I think as one gets yeah. older, uh, you know, I, I really have had some really fortunate serendipity experiences that turned into huge opportunities, whether I was just available or whatever the case, I don't question uh, good fortune. But you know, even my, my son says, you know, you did so much, you, you, you know, you, you don't need to do any more. Uh, and he's right. And that's why I decided, well, why not leverage what I know with whatever people need to know to yes. complement or complete them? And then it's like, a, a you know, a um, fractional uh, producer where you really need the other person in order to make it happen, uh, but then you can walk away. You see, when you keep building yourself, that's all you have to build on. And and all of a sudden you got to get bigger, better, faster, something or, you know, in order to stay relevant or you're following instead of leading. Before we go any further though, let, let's take this time to uh, recognize this wonderful audience, Elizabeth. I uh, loved your, your uh, message uh, yesterday. Look forward to responding today and having you back on the show. Kelly, I can't ever say enough about Kelly. Been with the show and really partnered up to make this happen over the last nine months. Has her own show, The Awesome Journey, uh, Tuesdays at 1, 1, 1 p.m. Eastern with Christy Howard. Uh, thank you, Kelly. Omar's here, who I'm going to be on his show this Sunday. And Omar's been on before, looking forward to having you on my talk show. Do you really know this Sunday? If that's a question, I certainly do. Uh, Elizabeth comes back with happy to be part, grateful. Grateful is a good place to start. I think more people should practice gratitude oh, yeah. because it brings context. And when you produce things, it should be a projection of who you are, what you are, what, where you are. And if you can integrate that into what somebody else is doing, That's all right. of a sudden you've got some, some flavor. You've got a spice that wasn't there before. Uh, Sheaf says, wonderful Friday. Great to see you. Uh, Sheaf has actually been involved with some celebrities and at a high level up in Toronto. I'm always trying to get a Sheaf on, 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 the, on, the, on the program, but I can wait. Uh, good morning, all. Linda's here. I missed you all. Hope to catch up past shows, but feel blessed reaching out in life with activities here from preparing and engaging and enjoying life. This week is my senior grandson's homecoming. Love being able to produce. I'll just finish it with um, mm. uh, uh, happiness and joy with all my body gives me choice for. So can say productive things can happen. Certainly does. You're, you're a, a light for everyone. Linda Ashif, he always has great quotes. The quality of your life is the quality of your communication. Tony Robbins, so true. And Carl, I haven't seen you in a while. Carl's a great guy, uh, financial uh, individual, does so many things over so many years for so many people. Thank you, Carl, for coming. And, you know, when I see produce, it's really manifest. Right. Everybody has producible things in them, producible thoughts, you know, and it's like, you know, uh, recording artists. When do you go to the studio? 
right? When do you stop writing? What, when do you stop practicing? And then say, hey, this is ready to go in the oven. And, you know, the nice thing is the more stuff you got in the oven, it doesn't matter if one doesn't turn out so good, you got enough going on, right? And I think producing lends itself to better producing because until you hear what you're saying, because when I'm saying what I'm saying right now, I'm hearing it exactly the same time you are and listening to it the same time you are, right? And sometimes that surprises oneself. Absolutely. The spontaneity of all of that. You yeah, know, well, is a is a guy. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's a, it can be. It's a very much a collab. Production is a very collaborative and connecting kind of um, endeavor. Uh, you know, playing live music with people, and particularly jazz, because it's by definition it's improvised in the moment. It just kind of touches on what you're saying, Don. It's it's like conversation. It's connection. It's collaboration. And there's an instant generation of energy because of the the regeneration of, of uh, response uh, and uh, a conversation, which is really what you've built this platform on, which is so beautiful because you, you're, you're feeding off of the energy of, of those that are participating and vice versa, right? Oh, absolutely. And, and you know, you, you're, you're picking it up pretty quickly, which means maybe it's a little more obvious than I have thought. Uh, <laughs> but, well, because, you know, I don't know, but you know. It, it's all about equalizing. Right. If you're producing something, That's you want to equalize all the aspects that one doesn't minimize or marginalize or over exaggerate something. So mm, what mm. I do, and it's because of 365 straight days of doing this, is understanding how to mix it. Right. When to bring the audience in, when, when to, to turn that on like a DJ, let's say. That's right. That's right. And it's their and it's their program because ultimately they transition into guest host and then transition into having their own show. So this is really like an improv, you know, circuit or a comedy circuit where people go out, try their stuff, get a little more courage, get a little bit more on the stage, and then decide, right on. Hey, I, I can be a star, right? Or I am that's it. That's it. The equalization word, we also sometimes in media say the uh, democratization of media, right? Where now we used to have three uh, networks back when you and I were kids, right? In the television world and a bunch of radio stations on a dial, a one way. Now it's a two way interactive environment that we're dealing with with media. And uh, also an anyone can have their own show and have a voice in the world, which is really what our company does. We help people have their voice in the world uh, by producing. So, Yeah, and I think what's so cool about it is the ability to become just as dynamic as your circumstances, right? Ah, yeah. So, so you know, cool. the, the equalization continues to change with the music, type with the musician with absolutely the, with the artist with, with everybody absolutely and and i think you're so right on with the in the past it was one way directional tv would would broadcast to you you wouldn't broadcast back to it and what people forget is now they have something that they look at looks like tv but it's all, all it's live stream where the audience now can be brought in. But more importantly, I would rather be me and David around the circle with the other 40 people than two on the stage with 38 separated. Because if you're going to equalize, why not make access and safety a, a key element? Because you'll encourage more interaction. You'll encourage more authentic interaction and now you got 40 people teaching 40 people at the same time who now have networks and influence on so much and it, that's how it starts to get amplified you know that's right that's right Don. yeah there's a so, natural there's a national nat, natural evolutionary process and um the audience in a very very direct way is deciding what's relevant, which again, it's back to that democratization and really listening to your market. No other way you can have such instant and direct impact or impact to your audience and feedback from them than doing something like this where it's real time. You've really, uh, 
you've really moved into this world in a very progressive way. In, in some ways, but in a lot of ways, the it became organic and yeah. incrementally every day you can yeah. add one little brick where some people it's all or it's one and done. Get all you can because you're not coming back. Right, right, but right. Talking back, are, talking to aren't coming back. So, right, right. I mean, just think if you can create an experience that people who were in the stands now to get to play on the field. Exactly. It's it's this it's like uh, the game it's like video games where you have this, right. this commu community of interactivity through online and technology enabling this ability to communicate in real time sometimes gamified sometimes competitive here we're you know you could argue this may be a game maybe it's not I don't know who knows right we can d decide what it is as we go but uh, it's this instantaneous feedback and energy that you're creating and we're creating together here to, right now that's beautiful. Well, it's well, recognizing about that. I, I appreciate that, but it's recognizing that things through Microsoft and LinkedIn and Microsoft's a leader in AI uh, would continue right. to make a video game experience now into a real life experience because, right. you, know, you know, you would take a story like Goliath and he's fighting somebody or whatever and make a little simple video game. Then it became more more graphic and more exciting and entertaining and then you brought in an audience to play it yeah then you brought the audience to be with it yes and now you take people in real life because in a sense this is a video game everybody's got buttons in front of them everybody's got a keyboard right you can start typing right now everybody's got note takers or whatever so the key thing is is to stay relevant with the vehicle where people are so focused on the content mm. without a vehicle, without an audience, you're producing for yourself and, and expecting something else to happen through somebody who is never going to hear it. You know, it's interesting, this dialectic or this um, sort of a parallel uh, exchange uh, of advancement, the technology and the content, I believe they kind of run together you know i recently every few years i'll binge on the life and business of walt disney so different world different space it was one way go to the theater go to tv but every advancement he he was always pushing technology as a part of the content one of the greatest storytellers of all time that was really his i think his sweet spot his uh superpower uh but always surrounded himself and was always pushing the envelope on technology. It's so inspiring to just revisit the way he was thinking about it in 1926, you know, uh, with Mickey Mouse and then beyond with the animation, what he brought to animation. We're doing the same thing now in 20, nearly 2030, a uh, hundred years later. It's, it's so fascinating the way humanity is seeking this dance between advancement of technology and the what the story is too at the same time. I don't know if that makes any sense. But. No, I think it makes a lot of sense. And if you look at it, even through Disney, started out with cartoons, went to movies, and eventually went to theme parks where the movies became an interactive physical experience, right? So it continued to evolve. It took hundred years to get there, but everything is moving at a much more accelerated pace now. Change is happening instantly in technology yes. and communication. So yes. the key is, is what side of the pond are you on? Are you on the right side before everybody gets here where you can practice your trade before you have to really justify it down the road and actually mm -hmm. be the pathfinder, the leader, that accelerates on their own momentum. But it's yes. all about aggregating the right people towards a, a proper purpose. Because as more people get into things bigger than themselves, they stay into them because there's room for them, right? Too many people are majoring in the minors and, and they're fighting over scraps that even if they got them, wouldn't change their, their world too much. Wow, and, that's, right? that's big. That is aim too low and you get what you'll aim for. You know, I think most people are capable of more, uh, but let's um, let, let's go back to our wonderful audience. 
Imagination is the highest kite one can fly, Lauren Bacall. I don't know where you get these from, Ashif, but, uh, you know, I sure appreciate them. Linda Coleman says, thank you uh, for the kind words. I'm fine. You and this group can help you reduce the manifest into more. Have a blessed Friday. So thankful for you, Linda. You you know, Linda and, and, and all, Ashif, they keep the ball rolling here, right? They keep me rolling because here's the, one of the secrets I learned. What we're doing here is creating what's leaving here. And this is kind of like a studio audience, right? Where 40 people drive the host, drive the content, drive the excitement and energy. But yeah. thousands will see it beyond this and never even know who was in the audience, but will know the messages that were communicated. And I think building on value you know, building on, on integrity, authenticity. And one last thing before I turn it back over to David is there is such a need for authenticity because of AI, because of the ability to manipulate things. So when you can see somebody in your eyes in real time, with you in real time, having real conversations, no, no script, no plan, going with the flow, that really shows you who the person is to you, right? And that's why I always say, let people know you for how you serve them. Yeah, yeah. Right? Because that's what I love they that. come back for. They don't care what you got or what you did or who you might be. It's like, what do you, what do you, where's the goods, right? I right mean, now. It's yeah. about right now. Yeah, I invested an hour. I'm thinking. I'm, I'm typing. What do you got for me? And I think when you always benefit the bottom up approach and let a boil up versus a top down directive approach. So, David, love to hear your thoughts. Years ago, I, you remind me of a story. You know how in life you sort of remember the memory is so interesting. We remember moments and we don't always understand why we remember them, at least for me. And my, you know, I think back to when I was a little kid, you know, think about memory and how, oh, I remember that little moment where I kissed my girlfriend's dog and she said, oh, it's the wrong one. You should be kissing me. Or uh, what you reminded me of is, is an instance where I was playing. I was in the middle of a drum solo at a club on Lincoln Avenue in Chicago and a marvelously talented uh, sax player named Ed Peterson was, you know, they were all, the band was listening. I was taking the solo and he, he cheered right now. Those words right now, and I remember this. This is 45 years ago, guys. And I, why I remember it, I guess it, it, it struck me as having meaning. And what you just said about the right now, which is what we experience when we play music in the moment, it's the purest, one of the purest forms of that. Certainly performance art of any kind is in the moment. It's about the right now, isn't it? It's so, Absolutely. I don't know what yeah, everybody know, thinks. And it's about the fun. You know, when I use <laughs> follow up and, and schedule someone, especially on their first appearance, right. I always leave it with, you know, it, it, this will be a lot of fun and value for all involved. Right. And, and if you've been doing things that are spontaneous, that's, that's when you're in the moment of, of surprise. Of, yeah. You know, that would come out of me, or I never knew yeah. I could get in that trumpet, or, or whatever the case. Or whatever the instrument is. It could be your voice just speaking like we are now, and, and the audience writing as they are now. But there's something about the moment. The, also, the preciousness of, because all you really have is right now. That's the other thing that you really were saying here in a funny way. It's the past is, is gone. The future is an imagine something that may or may not happen. People that experience anxiety or uh, are, are worried, um, it, you know, it's a, it's a concern about something that hasn't even occurred yet. It's an imagined event. It's very interesting. Uh, this this consciousness when you talk about the consciousness in the moment and how it how it plays into certainly what we're doing here and how you think about what you've created here is it's really interesting. Well, and you know, it's whatever you're doing in the moment can have the fascination of the moment. I mean, I, I had a bowl of oatmeal I designed to, this morning that was just unbelievable what I created with it. And I did take a minute to kind of look at look at it and enjoy. And some people would have ate it and, and forgot what even 
tasted like that because all they were looking yeah, you're at. Talking, it's yeah. the unconscious behaviors that we find ourselves sometimes in when we're not conscious. Um, you know, I, I think I shared with you when we did our pre call to this uh, uh, moment, um, I started meditating. I practiced tr transcendental meditation and I started about, I'm in my seventh year now. And um, one of the things that that practice has taught me, you know, it's all about the quieting of the mind, right? This is what, it's a very simple technique. I do it twice a day, 20 minutes. I don't know if anyone in the audience, please let us know if you're involved with meditation of any kind. TM is only one way to get there. Physical yoga is another way to get in the moment. And by quieting the mind and um, getting back, the mind, one of the first things they say when they train you to do this meditation technique, specifically TM, is that the mind wants to rest. It wants to sink they use the ocean metaphor, ripply ocean. I got to this, I got to that busy, busy, busy. Uh, you know, the world we live in, the phenomenal world moving through, down and through that 20 minute period, you can feel your mind quieting and quieting and quieting and quieting. And one of the things that I've learned from this is the, the great appreciation of, again, uh, the moment that may be a keyword for a future show, but, uh, or maybe we're capturing it here today. Uh, so we're producing in the moment. <laughs> Let's do it that way. <laughs> Well, uh, I just wanted to share that because it's been so profoundly. And when that happened, I was, I'm sorry. No, no, go one ahead. Last, one last little piece of that is, you know, I'm a 63 year old guy, but this was seven years ago. As soon as I started this practice of allowing, taking that 20 minutes twice a day and letting that interact with the busyness of life, which is necessary as humans, my life started to change. My business changed and started to grow at a very high growth. I attracted a wonderful team of uh, leadership. You know, we've got five, uh, the fab five, as I call us, that help produce these audiobooks and podcasts. That's when stuff started, at least for me, my experience was, wow, that's when stuff really started to turn. After I went through sort of a prolonged period of, of trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And uh, sometimes it's just about being, not doing. Anyway, back to you. No, I think that, that that's terrific. And, you know, everybody is focused on the understanding of the now. I mean, you got Eckhart Tolle, who is all about the power yeah. of now. You yep. got Michael Singer, who's done some fabulous books uh, that I, I would recommend. Mm -hmm. And the now is where you are. And too many people drag the legacy from the past into the now bring fear or excitement of the future into the now. And now they don't have a now. They have a mix of yesterday and tomorrow. And now they're either halfway in fear or embarrassment for what they yeah, did, or fear or anticipation what they're going to do. So their energy level is not attentive to their time situation and their positioning, right? And if you just do incremental things, a block of success at a time and appreciate what you just did. I mean, how many times do you prepare, produce, and move on to preparing and producing instead of celebrating, enjoying, savoring what you just completed? How many, another minute or two, would, would that interfere with anything else? And if not, right. it would right. cherry on the cake or whatever. And I right. think... It's the creative imagination for yourself is how do you cast yourself in tomorrow's movie? Mm. Who's the co-star with you? What outfits are going to wear? What's your script? When do you come? When do you go? And you can design this. You know, you would never think of walking out of the house without your shoes on. You know, you, back to the world, back to the word produce for the day. Right. So this is really interesting because. In fact, we are molding, producing our oatmeal. We're with each step we take. I mean, this is getting very granular, but very high sort of conscious about everything that is in the moment and moving into the next moment. It's very interesting. And those little moments comprise making the larger moment, which is maybe what people tend to manifest or recognize as manifested. A lot of this is internal for us, right? It's how we're experiencing reality. Wow. Yeah. And thank you for your kind words. Um, that was Elizabeth. And uh, and um, about someone said something about trying to be more consistent. You know, one of the other things I learned when they were training and that I've learned to accept about a meditation practice, there are days where I miss the afternoon sessions just because of something or I rarely miss the morning and that's just me. But I've also learned to accept um, 
missing a day because that's part of life. And that's just part of the experience of being in a practice is that it's not going to be perfect and not to beat yourself up about whether it's perfect or not, or how consistent people I'm trying to meditate. No, the whole thing they were teaching was the, the, even in the meditation itself, thoughts are rolling in and thoughts are coming through and accepting the fact that the thoughts coming in and out during the 20 minutes while you're going from ripples down to quiet mind that's part of the experience. I have days where there's a lot of turbulence and there's a lot of thoughts. In fact, this morning session, I was ruminating on, you know, I'm planning some stuff for my business. It was in and out and in and out. I'm not trying to push it away. I'm accepting that it's there. And, and this acceptance that's taught even within the session of a 20 minute meditation translates to acceptance in the real phenomenal world, which is really a fascinating, it's not a side effect of meditation. It's just part of it. So it's this, it's, it, it, it kind of rolls into what, where we started today about this acceptance of reality as it is and being with the audience, being with the energy in the moment now. It's very basic, but, and it's very fundamental, but I think we get lost sometimes in the busy, busy, busy of everything. So there it is. Well, sure. And I think I love that flow uh, uh, thought because, you know, really you're flowing from one now to the next now, right? <laughs> And I think if you keep things in the now, you're going to have more direct involvement and more f completeness in your thought towards it. Yes. Versus, hey, I just carry this with me. I got to worry about this. And I'm giving about half of what I could have if I wasn't so uh, overwhelmed by this other stuff. Yes. Maria says uh, she's yeah, asking for a little me, bit of guidance there. Okay, yeah, go ahead, Don. Let's let's. Because I've been a little remiss here. <laughs> I've, I've, I've managed to, I'm sorry if I'm... No, no, no. I, 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 too I, much, I, too much flow, maybe. No, too, you're doing yeah. great. It's beautiful stuff. It's worth it. Uh, right, cool. Does that new access challenge a signal to noise quotient? How does one stand out? Elizabeth says, Ashif, love this. Uh, back to the LinkedIn user. I think that it is through shows like this where it builds community. People care when they know you care. Absolutely. You get what you give, and sometimes you get a lot more. Uh, Charles is here from Hong Kong. Haven't seen you in a couple of weeks. I got to give Charles credit. He's been on the show many times, always supporting the show. It's 11 p.m. in Hong Kong when this comes on. And, and, and Charles does have a real job, but it is Saturday tomorrow, and I, I usually see uh, Charles, and Charles got an open invitation anytime. A chief says story of a story so true. A Linda comes back with guys right into the flow like jazz feeding off each other as a song can develop. A DJ using ability to help flow from song and hear a thought or word bringing thought. And remember making comments to our commentator on TV but didn't get the chance. Uh, let me see the um, chance. Okay. Okay. So I'll get back to that, Elizabeth. A sheaf is filled with valuable goodies, so true. Uh, you know, and the more people use this to network, to find ways to connect with aligned in the now people who are here for probably the same reasons you are, is to improve themselves and hopefully help improve others, right? It's not what you get. What you get is an invitation to give, right? And, an and a give is an invitation to get. And whether it ever comes back, so what? You know, just keep doing it. And eventually when it does come back, it should be relevant, valuable. And it's, I'd rather do more with less people than less with more people, right? Why not get deep? Why not get rich? You know, uh, yeah. Omar says, so true. People remember you for what you do to them and how you help them. You know, it's how you make people feel that makes people want to feel that again. So how do you give somebody a feeling they're not used to, they, they admire or look forward to and make it every day, same time, right? Because yes, there's no time to forget. And now you get another dose and you can take a little bite every day. You don't got to take the bag, you know, you can come back tomorrow and get more. And that's where I think, uh, Success comes from is comfort when you're relaxed with yourself, when you're your own self, where you don't remember what did I say to them and why did I say it? And all of a sudden, right. you're, you're not, this, this crazy you're not in your head. Yeah, That's, yeah, yeah. Natalie's here. Can't say enough about her artwork. She's just a wonderful artist. 
shows up uh, with, with uh, great paintings on her post all the time. Awesome oh, nice. conversation. I practice meditation. My goal is to become more consistent with it. I believe 100% of this benefit. You know, the more you can slow things down when most people are trying to speed things up, you know, get it to where your comfort level is, right? Everybody could do more, but why? Do what There's a feel. We, we, the, you, I, I got to respond to that if I may. The uh, We are... You mentioned earlier, Don, the, the world is moving faster and faster. It's, it's exponential accelerator. The rate of change, acceleration, the velocity of change is it, we're not designed to, to deal with that kind of scale. And so this is a challenge. It's like a tug of war between human consciousness and what is seems to be happening in, in external forces that we're encountering. And so we, to your point, we have, we, we, we need to accept all of that, but at the same time, um, back to being in the moment and be patient with yourself and be patient with the world. And, um, and, and, and if you need to take it at a, at, you, you, we're on our own clocks. We're not, we don't need to be a slave to the external clocks of the world that's coming at us so fast. We can't even, we don't even know how to, how to deal with. So breathe in between, you know, that's so important. I've learned that with my leadership stuff too, um, to leave space and, 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 and try to not become, uh, um, what's the word? Um, feeling compelled to, to try to keep up, you know, with a pace that is just not, it's not on a human scale. Well, and I think to your point, a lot of times it's easier to let someone else take the lead, take the steering wheel, right? Mm. I mean, even though you might own the car and you've got the yeah. right to drive it, yeah. at what point do you say, hey, it, you know, it's your turn. You know, I want to take a, take a break here. And why not? Right. Because too many people let things happen to them instead of choosing, they become looking for someone to choose them. They're looking for opportunity to show up. And sometimes it will, but in the meantime, whatever you do for yourself doesn't discourage the opportunity from seeing you, right? So why not help yourself while maybe you're hoping or you feel you deserve help from somebody else? And if you're just living in the now, there is no room for guilt or shame or embarrassment or fear or in, in, intimidation. And, you know, you attract how you show up, right? Maria comes back with, uh, well, Elizabeth wants to get, pay a nice compliment. This is wonderful, David. You just took this morning to a whole new level. So great. Uh, interesting stuff, David. Interesting stuff. Keep talking. Okay. Debbie. Debbie, who is our butterfly lady, has been on like three times. Plan on having her back soon. She is doing so much for the buff, uh, the butterfly migration to Mexico, the monarch butterfly. She's wow. been planting so much, and she really focuses on the butterfly because her focus is, you know, usually four and five year old children, and 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 providing for them. So Debbie's mm. just a great lady. Imagination mm. is more important than knowledge. Knowledge is limited. Imagination is unlimited. Albert Einstein, Elizabeth who's really getting up there in the thought leadership, waking up and getting up are two different things. So, so, so profound. Maria tried, tried so many times, can't do it. One knows how much <laughs> Maria, you got to get, uh, you know, into it. Uh, why are my comments twice? Oh, I don't know. I'm, I'm st I, I don't even try to know what, what goes on with restream. Uh, Natalie says, yes, I'm glad you mentioned that. So true. I'm best at meditation and action, which I do daily using creative processes. Elizabeth, is David, your voice and energy is similar to Brian Simpson's. Great to hear. Beverly, who's here every Tuesday, every Tuesday. Gr great therapist and, and, and consultant and coach. Uh, does, does it all. Has her own podcast. So glad to make yes. it. Welcome, David. Uh, she uh, comes back with notice it all, take nothing for granted, always be grateful. That's a wonderful method or, or thought to take with you. The, co the clock is the construct, Beverly says. We need to follow our bodies and our minds. There is no race, but you do need to take time to block, to have focus, or you'll never reach your goal. And, you, you know, the thing is, you want to reach your goal healthier and happier 
also than when you started, right? N not just, uh, you know, I got this and now I paid for it that way. You know why? And take it slower then. You know, who created the timetable? Who created the pressure, right? I know in life it always takes longer and costs more in different yes. ways than you have to allow for it. And, you know, that's why trapping to it, saying, okay, where am I? Do I have enough time to take a day off? And if I don't, then I'm doing something wrong, right? It's not I should do more. It's I should examine what creates this situation right. where I can't go to some place I always wanted to. And, you know, the, the, the game is always between you and yourself. You set the rules. You pass the judgment. You give yourself parole whenever you think you you deserve it. And why it's not, not happening? Yeah, why not be your best friend? You know, if it was someone else who was doing what you're doing, would you be talking to yourself like that? Probably not. So, David, we covered a lot of people, a lot of wonderful people, a lot of great friends. You know, and we're already forty minutes into it. Seems like we just started. Right. That's part of the now thing too, right? It just time melts away. The create someone mentioned the creative process, drawing, painting, playing music, writing poetry, writing, writing period. When time melts away, isn't that like so splendid? <laughs> like we have here. Oh, for sure. And it happens every day. And you know, I always say this is the fastest hour on LinkedIn. Right. So you might be taking an hour out of your calendar, but it only seems like 15 minutes of thought that has to go into it or or, or attention and 45 minutes worth of receiving. Yeah. And, you know, how long would you be in front of an ATM machine if it kept spitting out cash? <laughs> <laughs> A wonderful business or, you know, sort of financial metaphor. Hmm, yes. Very interesting. Wow. So if you're buying a show or a vending machine, it continues to pro provide a much higher return on your time investment, your thought. Ooh, an ROT, return on time. Hmm. Yeah, and, and then it's, it's portable enough to take with you and apply with other people. Take someone's yeah. quote and requote it. Take something yeah. David said that was really witty and funny and share it. And all of a sudden you're serving everybody here and you're a little bit better every day. And if you have 40 people getting a little bit better every day, the group gets significantly better. Because I found in life, the more sophisticated the person is who you're dealing with, who knows even more than you, the easier it is to deal with them, right? Because everybody knows what, what, where we're at, what, what we should do here, and more yes. clearly, what we can do that we could have never done without each other. Right. Too many people look at someone else and say, well, that's a split. That's competition. That's a instead of saying, wow, that person has the key at, to what I could really use. And I've got the key to what they can use. But then it opens up the creative process. That's right. Right. Too many I love the spirit of that, Don. That's just. Well, well that, speak to that then, David. That brings so, home so many. I had a bit like a flood of thoughts as you were talking about it. It just triggered so much. Um Yeah, I, I, know, I need a moment to sort of consolidate the th thinking. There was so much to just rush through and now it, it sort of fleeted. So I'll, I'll rest for a moment. But there's so much packed into what you, you that flow you just had. Um, I think mostly it, it was about the, the, the exchange of energy and uh, judgmental. And the, uh, so we do tend to polarize. Certainly the media teaches the world humanity to do that to create polarities that are often so destructive rather than um looking at everything as a collaboration and an opportunity i think that's the essence of what touched me there as you were speaking um it's always it's a constant and continuous flow of collaboration rather than an, an othering it's not it's not zero sum it's there's enough to go around there's enough energy everywhere that's a part of it but it's 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 the dance we do as humans on the planet and in this moment that uh, really create that energy that we're all um, uh, seeking. Cool. So. Well, well, you know, I think that creates in musical terms kind of a jam session when people come, <laughs> right. where where That's there right. is no yesterday or tomorrow, and whatever happens right. is what happens. 
And then you don't think, you don't have boundaries, you don't have expectations. And some, some stuff flies right, some t- stuff creates the next opportunity, but you don't know what it is until you do what it is, feel and experience, and then do it in front of a lot of people. And all of a sudden you get their viewpoint, which may be stronger in fortifying you than your own viewpoint. Right. If you did something and say, I didn't think it was that funny, but geez, everybody couldn't stop laughing. You know, then I'm going to think it's funny. Right. And the opposite is true, too. I got the funniest thing and nobody laughs. It's not as funny to me anymore. And the next time I say (laughs) something happens will be probably the last time I say it. And that's what it should be. You take one step at a time. You know, your left foot isn't thinking when your right foot is moving. Right. And that's cool. Yeah, 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 and and get get yourself in all the game at the now time with the people who make you jam better. You know, you're always the, racing a faster racer than a slower one, David. These no, I was just going to uh, interject. Uh, I heard an interview with uh, drummer Vinnie Colada uh, uh, recently, where he was. They were uh, someone was interviewing him on you. It was a YouTube clip. And he was talking about how if he starts, so he's playing, right? And he was talking about flow, which is kind of at the core of a lot of what we're, what we're jamming on here, right? And he said, if you start, to, if I start to think, he was, he was speaking, if I start to think about what I'm about to play, it, it's all over. This is just going to really mess me up. I just need to let go of thinking and just go with the flow. And so this drumming metaphor is so beautiful. For me as a drummer, it's sort of, sort of, is extremely easy to relate to, but I think it, it's everything is like that. Uh, yes, we have to deal with thoughts and, and information and organization. And, and there, we're, in, we've, we're cycling in and out of those modalities. But, but if, if in so many cases, certainly in, in an instance like this, where we're just in, our, uh, in this dance of ideas and, and consciousness, it's like, we don't want to be thinking too much. We just want to be... That moment a few minutes ago where you you tossed it to me and I was like, hmm, I don't even think I could. I started to think. That's why I couldn't I couldn't immediately respond. I actually caught myself thinking, overthinking. So I don't know if that's meaningful, but no, uh, no. And here's the thing: is everybody likes to be challenged in the moment. Mm-hmm. The point you just made, and the reason why people give up things is usually twofold. One, it was too much work, time, and trouble. And that's why when I looked at the show, I said, there is no preparation except a word of the day and an invitation to the person to be here. I right? love the elegant simplicity of, of that model. And there's way. no homework when it's done. So you right. can have a pure hour. If you're going to create an organic video, something that's staged and, yeah. and, and, and practiced, yeah. Right. That'll take you so much more time because you have the editing ability. You're going to go in and start fixing things here. you got a built in excuse. Well, hey, it was live. I can't change what I just said. You can't unring a bell. And, you know, what happens is then you can do an hour a day forever, because when people say, how do you do this seven days a week every day for a year? And it's like, well, some people work eight hours in a day. This is seven hours in a week. You just stack them differently. You just space them differently. But now you have 23 hours until the next show to glean what you learned, what you shared, what you can now learn. The goal is to be better than yesterday, but not as good as tomorrow. And if every day brings a better gift or reward to what you have, there's something to stair stepping and seeing where the next stair takes you. When yeah. you're, you know, sick and tired of sick and tired, doing it to get paid, trading time for money, all of a sudden the humanity starts dissipating, right? And, and your life becomes hard because your work isn't in the now. It isn't you. You know, you're separate from yourself. And what I advise and a lot of other people is a minimalistic lifestyle, that you don't have to trade time for money, that you have more time to pursue what you have because people either run out of money or run out of time or both or patience or just say, let me get back to where it's easy, safe, but also I'm going to burn my dreams and, 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 and live a life of quiet desperation 
or whatever it is, or learn to be comfortably uncomfortable. And you know why? Because no one gets out of here alive. You know, why not take whatever you have and no one's guaranteed tomorrow, right? So why not use it instead of just watch a time out on you? But that's, that's a person who works with a sense of urgency and also a sense of I'm good enough no matter what happens and I'm smart enough not to keep doing wrong things over and over again, right? First right. time you can excuse, second time you got a question, but let's get to Beverly before we don't get to Beverly. Beverly says, right. Debbie, Debbie's a big hitter in the crowd. She's just so uh, enthusiastic and exciting when she comes on. Get dressed, good to go. Uh, you know, yeah. I don't know how many of these people you know, David, but obviously you could see how three, four, five line comments, uh, people really put thought, time, and attention to, to participating, not just viewing or being in the audience, but really throwing it back to everybody else. That's right. It's, this is about impact. We're having impact on each other because we're, we're probing and we're, we're questioning and we're, we're, uh, we're riffing with each other. We're dancing. We're creating poetry together in the stream of consciousness on the left, on the right side of the screen. It's really cool. Yeah. I'm, so, I'm grateful. I, you know, I came in not really knowing what to expect. We had a quick conversation about what this might be. Um, I've never done anything exactly like this, Don. You've created something very unique, which I think you're aware of. And you're certainly, those that participate every day or every week are telling you, it's a, it's a really an amazing thing to witness. Yeah, but you know, one of the factors is I started, my first one took eight minutes all by myself with no audience. <laughs> right. And then I did my second one and eventually I got an audience. So you just dove into this thing without any expectations, which is no, a beautiful way to... Yeah. I just figured to keep stirring the pot, keep throwing stuff in. And you know what I consciously did for purpose is there was no effort ever in the last year to monetize it. That's right. That's right. right. Because and as a businessman, that is such a fascinating thing to contemplate. You know, I'm a guy that I run a business and a lot of it is about, you know, how do we, what's the monetization strategy as we sometimes call it, right? And, uh, you know, sometimes we're a slave to that thing. And that's not what it's all about, Alfie. So back to you. I'm sorry. I didn't mean yeah, to. No, no. It's perfect, perfect, perfect add to it. And the reason I say that is yeah. you, you don't know what it is until it comes out of the oven. But people can't wait for whatever reason to let it fully bake. And in essence, it's not what you think it is or what you think it can be. But if you look yeah. and say, what is the dynamics? It right. has bringing people and they come in at the back of the auditorium right next to the exit door because they don't know what to expect and they get comfortable and they start moving to the front with the audience. And then they start getting interactive and then they get on the stage and they move on. So I thought, why not use this as a runway, as a way of getting more people to do live streams with a tailwind of an audience that's built in with someone who's doing it all the time and, you know, when someone is experiencing benefit beyond the benefit they thought they were going to provide, right? When you went in and said, hey, I'm going to give everybody $100 and you came out with everybody giving you back 200 right? How, how, what a premium is that? And, you know, how do you feel when you do other things? And if the competition is with others, it's on the quality and the value provided, Right. And that's why I never worry. Well, someone copy if they if they want to do what what I've done and even that's the key. Why have to do it? Because the person like Kelly, who was here nine months ago, saw what a regular show it was. And it was still pretty good. But someone yeah. coming in now has got like full rockets going. And now what do they want to leverage? What can they blow up with? an audience like this with a sound stage, you know? Yeah. And I think that's so cool because it's, you know, why not? Why not be where no one else is? Why not get 24 times the comments of someone doing video? I mean, I don't, I, that's even when I ran my own business and, you know, I ran a pretty big business. I know and people would ask me, well, who are you? Right. Because I wasn't a, a household name. But I said, well, you know, my best partners are UPS, Microsoft, IBM. 
you know, these are all people I have strategic arrangements with, which also gives me tremendous scale and lends itself to my core competency. So it's not me, it's me with everybody that I'm with and the power they have. And then third party validation is so great because here's another thing. Nobody wants to be the thing as much as they want to be where the thing has just been. So as you get higher quality, higher value speakers, other high value speakers, but then you start adding things together because to interesting, you know, David's a podcaster. And just the other day I said, well, what's the next level for people who are doing podcasts? Is live streaming. So I reached out two days ago and I hardly do that. And I found in my 37,000 connections, 352 who are podcasters. And then I, I sifted through to get 50. Yeah. Either because other ones weren't active or whatever the case. Sure. And invited all of them. And within a day, I got six people coming on the show, eight more Beautiful. calls. And it's the next progression. Right. Take, why not take somebody who's almost there and get with them and get them over that someone who's never going to be there and you got to wake them up just to get them going. Sure. So, right. So I think it's right. all time efficiency, thought efficiency and where are you making your investments and investments are my feeling people. You know, I started this by myself. I can say for the whole year, no one's added a keystroke but me to everything I've done. Yep. And, and, you know, the beauty is I learned it with each keystroke. And every time I had to do a keystroke, I thought, how do I not do this keystroke again? Right. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I heard it, what it used to take six hours to 50 minutes. Well, anyways, not to talk about me, but to talk about what's happened to me through these wonderful people, people right. that are like a, a, a chosen family that I see more and interact with more than probably everybody but one or two people in my life. And I see them on a casual, no obligation way. No one, no one is forced to come here tomorrow and everybody can be who they are, but it is a validation when people choose an hour of their busy day and dedicate it to this, but at the same Sorry. time becoming better for it. So. David, 57 minutes in, what what are your final thoughts on your experience? Oh, work? my goodness. Well, I've sort of, uh, there have been little strands of my experience throughout our uh, uh, our dance, uh, you know, our verbal dance, Don. Uh, first of all, I'm, 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 I'm so grateful that uh, you brought me into the fold today to spend this hour with you and everyone that's uh, with us. And I, I have a a true uh, authentic appreciation for what you're doing here, which I could not have had if I were not actually participating. So thank you to you. Um, and and I, I want to thank everyone else who's been here and really kind of inserting uh, in the flow through text uh, to, to, to bring more energy to the, to the conversation and uh, for giving us food for thought and, and um, ideas to feed off of so that we can, continue to propel this flow of constant improvement into whatever tomorrow brings. It's beautiful stuff. So thank you. Um, and also it's, it's reframed, you know, I'm in a, I have a business that produces podcasts and audiobooks. So audiobooks is an author reading their manuscript, uh, podcasts, which is more sort of, um, uh, in, in the wheelhouse of what we're happening here. And you sort of telegraph the idea of live streaming, being a part of podcasting or maybe being the evolutionary, uh, eventuality of it. It's fascinating because we grapple on our team with how edited should it be? How produced should the messaging be? And it's different for each client and they have their preferences too. But all of this has inspired me to begin to contemplate how we can serve our clients uh, in Audavita Studios with with the idea that streaming can be a part. And we do have a couple of podcasters that actually use the stream as the basis for their produced show. And then we reproduce it. So it's, there's some of this happening, but you've taken it to a level that, uh, that we haven't with our clients. And so it's inspired me to think a little bit differently about not only our business model, but more importantly, how, how are we serving our clients with relevant, with a relevant solution that's going to move the needle for them. So. Yeah, that's that's beautiful and so well articulated. And when you articulate what you articulate, 
it really takes about half the time that other people would articulate the same idea. So you actually got maybe twice the impact as a normal articulator. Uh, but to your point, what I found is, is it's not an either or anymore. It's an either and. That's right. There's there's audio people who love that. There's podcast people who love that. And there's live streaming. And not everybody is going to shift to wherever you project from. But if you say, right. hey, we're on the cool side of the street with this, right? And you don't have to give up what you have. And sometimes you use one medium to support another one. Right. This would be a great platform for podcasters to come on and get the word out through the thought leaders and influencers here, not thinking, hey, this is a client based audience. And how many books or workshops can I sell? But how many people can I get to know? So they'll want to get to know me and allow me to get to know their people and vice versa. I mean, more doors opened up, gives more access, gives more opportunity. And I, you know, people should have choices. And actually, if you think you're at the top of the heap, you're going to come out better for someone to see maybe someone who's not as evolved and, and they appreciate it more when they have context. So, you know, everything is, is a movement. And sometimes it's just reorganizing things, reprioritizing things, taking a little more inventory, but more importantly, or as importantly, finding somebody with fresh eyes and ears who can kind of take something and give you that fresh eye and, and, and ear response uh, to, to free your mind up to go one more level, to, to confirm something that you might not have had. And little things done right over time, the compound become huge over time. And you give yourself that time. Last words, David? Yes, I have a hard stop for a, a new a client call, so I gotta run. Okay, I'm go so I'm so grateful to be here. I'm sorry to you know no, no, we're no. right up to we're right up to the hour. I'll you see bet. you later. Thanks yeah, everybody, and thank you, Don. We'll we'll Take circle care. back later. Bye bye. Yeah, thank you, David. Thank you. Thank you, audience. Uh, and we'll come back in 23 hours, and we'll do it again. I think this was just high energy, quality thought, great interaction. I would put this up at one of the top shows. Uh, so. Linda finishes up. Great morning. Have a blessed day. So, so much back to you. It was a pleasure meeting you, David. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Elizabeth. Talk to you.